Hello, today we're going to talk about reactivity 3.4.1 and 3.4.2. These are about nucleophiles and we'll go into just the basics of nucleophilic substitution. Okay, so what are nucleophiles and electrophiles? Nucleophile um, is something, if we break down the word, the nucleus of an atom is positive. And this suffix here, phile, means that it is attracted to the positive charge of the nucleus. So a nucleophile is something that is attracted to positive charges. They tend to have lone pairs of electrons. Electrophiles, on the other hand, electrons are negatively charged. And so they are things that are attracted to electron or additional electron density. Um, we'll get a little bit more in detail with electrophiles in a later section. Um, but just so you know, they are the opposite of nucleophiles. Now, when you have a um, reaction between a nucleophile and an electrophile, the nucleophile will donate both electrons for a bond. And that bond that's formed is called a coordination bond or a coordinate bond. The electrophile, on the other hand, will be the one that accepts both electrons from the nucleophile to create that coordinate bond. A lot of times we'll see uh, it's a, it called a coordinate covalent bond. Um, and it's just unique because a lot of times when we talk about covalent bonding, um, we see two atoms, each providing one electron, and then they share. But in this type of interaction, the nucleophile donates both of the electrons, the electrophile accepts, and then they share um, the electron density. Okay, so now we're going to get into something called nucleophilic substitution. When you have carbon atoms attached to halogens, like chlorine, that's a polar bond. And it's a polar bond because the chlorine has a much larger electronegativity than the carbon, and so the chlorine is going to pull on the electrons in that bond a lot more. This gives the chlorine a slightly negative charge and the carbon a slightly positive charge. So because that carbon has that slight positive, it is attractive to nucleophiles. It's whatever your nucleophile is, uh, is attracted to that slight positive charge. An example of a nucleophile would be like a hydroxide ion. That lone, one of the lone pairs on the oxygen from hydroxide can be attracted to the positive charge, the slight positive charge on the carbon. And your overall net reaction here that's going on is that nucleophile is going to react with some carbon, some carbon chain with a leaving group leaving group, which is very frequently a halogen. And there's going to be a substitution reaction because the hydroxide is going to come in, the nucleophile is going to come in and displace the chlorine from there. So you'll see the carbon group is now attached to the nucleophile and the leaving group, which is usually a halogen, will leave and uh, be on its own. So that's why we call it a substitution because one thing is taking the place of another thing in the compound. And it's nucleophilic because the substance coming in is acting as a nucleophile and donating the two electrons to the carbon to form a new bond and we effectively push out the old bond. So let's talk about leaving groups again. I want to rewrite this equation so we can see it. The nucleophile, this is a generic nucleophile. There are a lot of different things that could be nucleophiles, but um, we're looking for that lone pair of electrons that can be donated. The nucleophile is going to come in to our organic compound with a leaving group on it. Um, and then what happens is the nucleophile will then don donate its electrons to the carbon that has that slightly positive charge. We use these curly arrows. Um, they indicate the direction of electron movement. So since the nucleophile is donating two electrons 
to form that new bond, um, we draw the arrow going from the nucleophile to the carbon, which is accepting the electrons. That means that the carbon has too many electrons now. So what it's going to do is going, this bond is going to lose those two electrons and give them to the halogen or the leaving group, but it's usually halogens. That way, your net result is the nucleophile is now attached to the carbon and the leaving group is by itself. And you can see both of the electrons from the original bond are now with the leaving group. Now halogens make really good leaving groups because they have weaker bonds to carbon. Um, and you can check this uh, using your data booklet. So section 12, section 12 in your data booklet has a bond enthalpies. Now, if you don't remember, bond enthalpies is the energy or um, heat energy, really, that is required to break bonds. So the greater the bond enthalpy, the stronger the bond, the more energy it takes. So lower bond enthalpies are better leaving groups. And so you want to be looking at the bonds between carbon and the other thing. So like if I'm comparing carbon to chlorine, carbon to iodine, um, you want to look for which one has the smaller bond enthalpy, and that's going to be a better leaving group. Okay, and our example question here is using curly arrows to show how hydroxide ions react with bromomethane to form methanol. So let's go ahead and we'll start with the bromomethane. There's bromomethane, and it's reacting with our nucleophile, our hydroxide ions. I'm only showing one lone pair, but the oxygen does have additional lone pairs on it. Um, you'll see that pop up a lot. Same thing with the bromine has lone pairs. I'll go ahead and draw them in so you can see. Don't forget that the carbon is slightly positive and the bromine is slightly negative in that polar bond there. And of course, our nucleophile is the hydroxide. So what happens is the, the nucleophile will donate the electrons, and you can pick any of those lone pairs if it's drawn like this. But it's make sure your arrow curves and make sure it points directly to the carbon, the area that has the slight positive. Then you're going to show the electrons that are in the existing bond are going to go to the leaving group. And again, make sure it's really clear where the electrons are going and that the arrow is curved. So that way you're going to have the new bond between the carbon and the hydroxide. And the bromine, bromide ions, will be by themselves now. And so that is your overall reaction showing our electron movement with the curly arrow.